there is a new way to test for 50 different types of cancer. Yeah, it, it's a blood test, which is amazing. Really interesting. Uh, joining us now to talk about this is uh, Nine News medical expert, Dr. Paul Coley. And uh, let's start off with, I am sure that at the end of this conversation, we'll say, but more study needs to be done. <laughs> Having mm -hmm. said that and yeah. putting that aside, this really is amazing. It would be so incredible just to give blood and be able to test for cancer. Yeah, I mean, this is hot off the presses. The data hasn't even been presented yet. It'll be presented this Saturday in Berlin at the oncology meeting. But if you think about, there are over 100 different types of cancers, right? And we only screen for about five of them. And most of the cancer deaths, 70%, come from all the rest of the cancers that we don't look for. So as you said, Phil, if we had a blood test that could augment the screening that we currently have, that could look for little fragments of DNA given off by the cancers, that doesn't just tell you if you have cancer, but tells you which type of cancer you have, you could imagine, obviously, much earlier detection and a population-wide approach and that would work. direct treatment for that specific type of cancer. That's exactly right. And it would be a big thing if people would say, can you replace the colonoscopy or mammogram? <laughs> not enjoyable procedures, but I'm guessing no. I'm going to say no. Absolutely not. That's a hard no. And that's actually my, one of my worries about this test is that people yeah. stop doing the regular cancer screening because you're just looking for fragments or markers of the cancer. It doesn't necessarily mean every cancer is going to give them off. So if you have 100 people who get this test, 99 will test negative. One person will test positive, okay? That's the performance of the test. That person that tests positive only has a 62% chance of having cancer. So they could also not have cancer, at least based on this data that we've presented so far. Now, maybe they'll go on to develop cancer later. This is one-year data that we're looking at. And of those 99 people that tested negative, you'll miss one to two people with cancer. So this is an adjunct or an add-on to the test that we currently have, certainly not a replacement. But we're looking for cancers like stomach, ovarian, pancreatic, liver, cancers. Blood that cancers, we obviously. Like but, mm -hmm. but, you know, because I always heard, like, in our lifetime, one in three will develop some That's kind exactly of cancer. exactly right. That's the so when you look at that number, you're like, okay, you're not catching everything. No, exactly right. Yeah, so we need to do better in terms of our cancer screening. And I do think we need to start earlier as well. We've talked about it before, but cancer used to be a disease of aging. And this test is only really recommended for people over the age of 50. But now we're seeing it in younger, younger people. Mm -hmm. So the question really becomes, should it start being checked on much earlier? And should we start incorporating some sort of formal, not just blood testing, but other types of imaging screening as well? There are a lot of, of celebrities. Kim Kardashian is one of them who, who advocates for these total body MRIs. Mm -hmm. I'm not a fan of that yet because it hasn't shown that we pick up real cancers and it's shown that we pick up a lot of what's called incidentalomas, incidental things that we mm -hmm. wouldn't need to change. And that's also something that not everybody can afford. Like right now, if insurance isn't covering that, Kim Kardashian's great to do that, right. you know, once every right. however long she wants to do it, but other people, <laughs> Uh, you know, making what they're, the rest of us are making, no. Well, so, it but, does create a divide for sure. Absolutely. And this test is $949. It is available. This Ooh. blood test. Yes, exactly right. You need a prescription for it. But that's also not something everybody can afford on an ongoing basis because you don't just test it once. The idea would be and to you have to do it every year? Repeatedly, oh. exactly, to try to... Do you think the more we do it, the better we'll get at it? I mean, th th so they're, they're presenting these now and it, this is what it is, but... Five years from now, it could be much more accurate? Yes, and that's what I'm hoping, that it's ushering in an era where we're being smarter, where we're using predictive technologies like artificial intelligence. We're using the combination of what's called biomarkers, blood tests, in addition to imaging, in addition to what's called polygenic risk scores, looking at your genetics and having it predict what your risk of cancer, put all that together, and then give a personalized cancer screening plan for every person so everybody doesn't get the exact same cancer screening. That makes so much more sense. Absolutely, and the bottom line is everybody like who's listening to us right now has been affected by it, knows someone who's yes. been affected by it. Anything that could have kept my dad alive, I'm for. Mm -hmm. so. Thank you, Dr. Coley. You can find much more from Dr. Coley at 9news.com slash Dr. Coley.